The topic for week one is the review or recap from uh, for discrete structures one, okay, which is of course covered the discrete mathematics. Now, um, introduction to introduction to discrete ma uh, discrete mathematics. So the learning outcomes for this topic or the learning objectives for the subject is by the end of this module, a student is able to one be introduced to discrete math and its scope of learning. Two familiarize with the applications and fundamentals of discrete mathematics. And then three, understand and solve given samples in the course module. So the topics covered here are introduction to discrete math, mathematical statements, the atomic and molecular statements. So implications, we have the converse, contrapositive, and the inverse. So intro to discrete math, this is the study of mathematical structures that are countable or otherwise distinct and separable. So we're going to study the four main topics here, combinatorics, okay, so the theory of ways things combine, in particular, how to count this way. So sequences, symbol, uh, symbolic logic, and the graph theory. Okay, so take note of that. We have four combinatorics, sequences, symbolic logic, and the graph theory. So this is the main topics that we are going to discuss under the discrete mathematics. So by the way, the father of the discrete mathematics is Erdos, as shown on the right side of your screen, that is Erdos. Okay. So let's start with a given statement here. Okay, that is a proposition. When you say proposition, this is any declarative sentence which is either true or false but not both, okay? So, for example, telephone numbers in the US USA have 10 digits. The moon is made of cheese. 42 is a perfect square. Uh, every even number greater than 2 can be expressed as the sum of 2 primes. So, 3 plus 7 is equals to 12. So these are not the uh, these are not statements. So these are the examples. We have would you like some cake? So of course that is a question. The sum of two squares, one plus three plus five, seven, okay, plus two n plus one, go to your room, three plus x is equals to uh, twelve. So these are just the example. So what is atomic? So a, th a statement is atomic if it cannot be divided into smaller statements. Otherwise, it is called molecular. You can build more complicated statements out of simpler, okay, using the logical connectives. So these are the statements, in fact, that atomic statements, okay. So telephone numbers in the USA have 10 digits. The moon is made of cheese. 42, 42 is a perfect square. Every even number greater than, uh, greater than 2 can be expressed as the sum of 2 primes. So 3 plus 7 is equals to 12. Okay? So these are the atomic statements. So next, we have the molecular statements. So telephone numbers in the US, USA have 10 digits and 42 is a perfect square. So know that we can break this down into two smaller statements. The two shorter statements are connected by an N. So we will consider the five connectives. We have N, we have OR, we have IF THEN, we have IF AND ONLY IF, and then we, we have the NOT. Okay, so this will be the five connectives. So for example, let me use my highlighter. So Sam is a man and Chris is a woman. Okay, so we use the end connective here. Next example, Sam is a man or Chris is a woman. Okay, next, let's try to use the if and then. So if Sam is a man, then Chris is a woman. Okay, next, let's try to use the if and only if. Sam is a man. If and only if Chris is a woman. So next, the last one, not, sum is not a man. Okay, so the first four are called the binary connectives because they are trying to connect two statements. 
while not is an example of unary connective since it applies to a single statement. Okay, so the first four are called binary and then the last one is called the unary. So meaning to say binary connectives here are the end or if then if and only if and then the unary connective is the not. Okay. So ato atomic and molecular statements. So these molecular statements are of course still statements so that they must be either true or false. So the absolutely key observation here is that which, which truth value the molecular statement achieves is completely determined by the type of connective and the truth values of the parts, okay? We do not need to know what the parts actually say, only whether those parts are true or false. To analyze the no logical connective, it is enough to consider propositional variables, so usually, capital letters in the middle of the alphabet, we can use the P, Q, R, S. Okay? So again, for the propositional variables, we're going to use the P, the Q, the R, and the S. So we think of this as standing for in for usually atomic statements, but there are only two values that variable can achieve. So it's, it's either true or false or zero or one. Okay? So we also have the symbols for the logical connective. So these are the symbols. So later on, we're going to discuss this one by one. So logical connectives. This symbol is called the negation. Okay, class, this one is a negation. negation. So to read this one, this is called as not T or negation. Okay, next this is the next symbol for the logical connective. This one that looks like a letter B. Okay. This is read as P or Q. Okay. That's how you're going to read this one. And this one is called as the disjunction. So again, or is disjunction. Next, we have the third example of the logical connective. This one. This is read as P and Q and called as the conjunction, okay? So N is for conjunction. Next, the symbol arrow here. Okay, this one going to write. So to read this, this is read as if P then Q. Okay, this is called as the implication or conditional. Next, the bidirectional arrow. This one, this is the bidirectional arrow. This is read as P if only if, okay, Q and called a biconditional. So take note of the symbols. You have to memorize the given symbols. And of course, there, how are you going to read those um, symbols? The negation, the disjunction, the conjunction, implication or conditional, and the biconditional. So, truth values for connectives. So, the truth value of a statement is determined by the truth values of its parts depending on the connectives. So, not P is true when P is false. Okay? So, this one, the B symbol here, the or, P or Q, okay, is true when P or Q is both, uh, P, P, P or Q or both are true. So next, the symbol that symbolizes the end is true when both P and Q are true. So kindly take note of this one because you have to memorize this for creating a truth table. Okay? So next, the arrow, this one, going to write. This one is true if when P is false or Q is true or both. So the bidirectional arrow here, this is true when P and Q are both true or both false. Okay? So the negation symbol, let's start with the first given, which is the negation of P. So by the way, negation of P, this is denoted by this symbol. Or sometimes the bar over, uh, bar over the alphabet P is the negation okay so either either of the two it's acceptable so it is not the case that p 
So, the negation of the following statements in the proposition. Okay, this is the P. And, of course, negation of P meanings to say not P. So, if this is false, of course, not P equivalent is true. Next, true. So, of course, negation of P, it will be false. Okay? So, example statements. Today is Friday. It is not raining today. Next is conjunction. Okay, so conjunction. We're using the symbol. Hold on. Okay, we're using the symbol. Okay, so let P and Q are propositions. So the conjunction of P and Q is denoted by the symbol. Okay, is the proposition uh, proposition P and Q. So the conjunction of P and Q is true. When both P and Q are true and is false otherwise. So now, find the con uh, conjunction of the propositions P and Q, where P is the proposition today is Friday, and Q is the proposition, proposition it is raining today. So again, P, B, uh, P is for today is Friday, and then Q is for it is raining today. So, creating the truth table, okay, we have the um, sample here, we have the false, false, we have the false, true, we have the true and false, we have true and true. So, again, false and true, then you will have false, okay? So, this is for the conjunction, and then true or false, so we will have false. So, if both are true, then we will have true. Next, disjunction. So, let P and Q are propositions, okay? So, the disjunction of P and Q denoted by P, Q here. Wait. So, this symbol is the proposition P or Q. So, again, if you're going to see the symbol like the letter V, this means what? This means or, okay, for the, for the conjunction P, V, Q is all, uh, false when both P and Q are false and is true otherwise okay so example students who have taken calculus or computer science can take this class so in the table here it shows that if both are false then you will have false if there is one false and then the other one is true this is considered as true so next if you have one true again then one the another one is false then it will be true and then if both are true then you will have true okay next okay so implication let p and q are proposition okay so the symbol here i'm using the if then or the directional arrow that is going to the right so we read this as if p then q so, this conditional statement is false when P is true and Q is false and true otherwise. In the conditional statement, okay, if P then Q, so P is called the hypothesis or the antecedent or premise. And then Q is called the conclusion or the consequence, okay? So, if P then Q, P implies Q. If P, Q, P if only Q. P is sufficient for Q. Okay, a, a sufficient condition for Q is, okay, Q if P, Q whenever. Q when P, Q is necessary for P. A, ne a necessary condition for P is Q followed fro uh, follows from P. So Q unless not P. So, for example, okay, we have the PQ here. So, we have the truth table, which is the false, 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 true, true, false, and then true, true. So, those are the variable, um, the variables for PQ. I am elected, then I will lower access. Okay? So, again, if P and Q are false, then you will have true. So, if either, if we have false, then we have true. So, we will have true. Then, if true for P and Q for false, then we will have false. 
and then if p and q is true okay we will have the result true that is for implication next is the biconditional okay so the biconditional is denoted by the bidirectional arrow q is the proposition p p if if and only if q okay so is true when p and q have the same truth values okay and is false either wise so that is also called as the by implication so for example as you can see here we have we have the truth table so it will be true if you have the same value so for example p and q are false so since both p and q are false we will have true so since this one is false and true we will have false then next we have true we have false they are different then we will have false next p and q true then we will have true so that is the by conditional or the by implications as long as the um, both of the variables are have same okay had same truth values okay then you will get true okay Next, we will have the converse, contrapositive, and the inverse. So, the proposition QP is called the converse. So, contrapositive is the proposition of not Q and the not P. So, when two compound pros propositions have the same truth value, we call them equivalent. So, that a conditional statement and its contrapositive are equivalent so the converse and the inverse of a conditional statement are also equivalent but neither is equivalent to the original okay so the converse of an implication okay is the implication of the pq is qp the converse is not logically equivalent to the original implication that is whether the converse of an implication is true is independent of the truth of the implication. So the contrapositive of an implication PQ is the statement of not Q and not P. So the implication and its contrapositive are logically e equivalent as long as they are either both true or both false. So again, if it's training there here, then the home in wins. So this is the contrapositive. Take note of this one. Okay, we will have this one. We have the contrapositive. We have the converse. And we have the inverse. So remember these symbols. So if the home team does not win for the contrapositive, then it is not raining. For the converse, if the home team wins, then it is raining. Inverse, if it's if it is not raining then the home team does not win 